Kendo UI. Hello and howdy. My name is Alyssa Nichol and welcome to another Kendo UI for Angular tutorial. In today's episode, we'll be going over the dropdown. The dropdown is another name for the HTML select element. The select element was added to the spec all the way back in 1993 when it was called HTML plus. Now the dropdown is an element that can be used standalone or inside a form to allow users to select an item from a list of items that's tucked inside the dropdown when collapsed. This functionality comes default to the select. However, customizing it can be a bit of a mess. As you see here in Yuna Kravitz's example where she's building out a custom dropdown with a ULLI and anchor, and it doesn't have a feature set, but it is working as a dropdown that is custom styled. This is why UI libraries have been perfecting the dropdown since the dawn of the select. The Kendo UI dropdown comes with an incredible list of features and flavors that are easy to access and start implementing. Some of those flavors include things like a combo box, a multi-column combo box, um, and so much more. If you scroll down on the overview page of our docs, you'll see the installation. So this is how you're going to get started using our dropdown today. You'll need a license to use Kendo UI, and if you don't have one yet, click that Try Now button in the top right to get started with a license. We're now ready to add the dropdown package to our Angular application. We can do this by using the ng add CLI command or by manually adding it and its dependencies with the npm install command you see below. The manual command is great for single use instances. Say if you have a feature module, that's the only module you're going to need this package in. But either way will get us to our goal. Once we've added it, we can now start using the Kendo UI dropdown. So here in this StackBlitz example, I've already installed the Kendo UI dropdown package, so we're good to go on that front. And I wanted to show you the difference between the default select element and dropdowns that are customized. So here we have a wrapper with a label and then a select inside of it. And we are looping through items inside of this list items array down here inside the component. And if we duplicate this, and we go ahead and shift tab that over um, and we change out this select. This is where we're going to want to see. Um, let's see, I wanna clean this up a little bit more. Tab that over. Uh, this is where we're going to start using our dropdown. Um, so start using Kendo dropdown and we'll use the, the most simple one, the dropdown list for now. Now, if I go over and show you our CSS, we're just giving a column here to the wrapper. Um, and let's go ahead and, since we have two wrappers now, give them margin bottom of, we'll say 40 pixels, just to give a little bit of space between our two examples. So now we should be ready to go ahead and start using the Kendo uh, drop down list. And usually in VS Code that auto completes for me. <laughs> so I am going to need to manually type out the closing tab there. And for our Kendo dropdown list to get started, we just need to bind data and set it equal to the array, the list items here. If we go ahead and save, we should have our t-shirt sizes in the Kendo UI dropdown list and um, they are selectable. And it was as easy as that to get started. Um, and it obviously uh, looks so much better than, <laughs> uh, than the customs, the default select um, HTML element. And of course, um, the Kendo dropdown list is a lot easier to customize than the select element is. So here I have a slightly modified project that we'll be working in um, to show the different types of dropdowns that Kendo UI offers. 
and just introduce you to the project real quick. Here is some base body styles that I just threw on to give us a bit of panaz along with uh, a new font that I find appealing. And then um, some base styles that we'll get to. Um, and this simple uh, select that is default to whatever browser you're in. Um, and of course I'm plugging in the data from this component and it is just a list of items in an array. So a very simple, primitive local data that we're binding to. Um, so the first dropdown uh, that I wanted to reiterate was of course uh, the dropdown list from Kenda UI. And this is where we'll start using some of those styles that I created. So we have a class of wrapper. If we go over here, I'm just giving simple things um, like flex and uh, giving like a divider between them and other things. Um, but if we go back over, you'll see that I'm binding to our list items, which again is just uh, the basic list I showed you before of ponies. Uh, I'm a huge My Little Pony fan, if you couldn't tell. And then I've also enabled filterable of true. Um, so to filter, you can either use the Kendo dropdown filter directive if the data is all available locally, which ours is, or you can manage the filter change event um, manually and our docs go into detail into that. So if you head on down to the dropdown list in our docs, uh, you're gonna wanna check out the filtering uh, feature to find out more. So that covers our basic Kendo dropdown list. Um, and we have another dropdown type called the combo box, which actually looks extremely similar. Um, and here I've bound to the same list of pony items. But as you can tell, when you click on the input area of the combo box, it actually gives you the cursor uh, with the ability to type, uh, which is really cool for things like auto selecting or auto filtering. However, on top of that ability, you can allow custom data. I'll set that to true. And when we go over here, we can say my own pony. And now that is um, a piece of data that can be plucked off of this input and submitted wherever. Um, and so the big difference between the Kendo combo box and the dropdown list is the ability to type in the input and the ability to have custom inputs. The next type of dropdown that I'd like to highlight is the autocomplete. So the autocomplete is uh, similar again to the dropdown list and the combo box in the idea that you are allowing a user to select something from a list of predefined items. Um, however, the autocomplete doesn't actually have a physical drop down list. Um, that only appears as the user starts typing. And so um, here we have our placeholder that's showing up, but we also need to go ahead and bind some data. Um, and this time I'm going to do a more verbose data set that we can go look at in a second. Uh, called ponies, but we also need to have not just uh, the data set, but which field in the data set are we allowing them uh, to type and choose from. And so I want to go over the pony names in this autocomplete box. So now if we save and go back over, uh, we should be able to start typing the name of uh, different ponies and you'll see that it starts to select that pony and then you can also use your up and down arrows to navigate through that list. Um, and then you have the X to clear it out similar to the combo box when you're typing a custom input. Um, and so this is the Kendo autocomplete and uh, let me show you real quick this data. Um, again, it's just a more verbose data set that I chose to bind to. And we are saying the name is the value field that we want uh, to be selected from on this input. So it's very, very cool and very, very nifty. The last dropdown type that I want to go over, and there are more than this, so please check out our docs uh, for more details. Um, if you actually look on over here, you can see uh, this overview of all the different types. But the last one that I really want to dive into, it's one of our newer ones, is the multi-column combo box. 
And so let's go ahead. It's a it's a big one, but don't be intimidated. Um, the multi-column combo box is essentially the ability to combine a table of data inside the drop-down field. So here I'm setting up um, multiple columns within our column combo box and this one is for the pony's name and then we have uh, the avatar image that's also being added next to the name and then we have two more columns one is for the pony's occupation and one is for the pony's alias and we're also giving custom widths here so we want this one to be 200 this one to be 250 um, so on and so forth so if we go ahead and make this a little bit bigger and we pop this open, you'll see this data where we have um, just a, a really rich table here with as really as many columns and um, different types of data that we want. Um, and it, it is all collapse and saving space inside of this multi-column combo box. And we can select and then it uh, fills in the name there. And if we, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. Um, if we go up here, you'll see that I am binding to ponies, which is that richer data set that I showed you on autocomplete. And um, we are setting the value field to ID, the text field to name, uh, but I'm also using uh, the ability, the template variable ability to call out MCCB ponies. Um, that was my, <laughs> my short version of multi-column combo box. And what I'm going to use that for is to go ahead and make this drop down open by default when the page loads. Um, and so I just wanted to show off this really cool feature. So we go back over to our component and I'm going to grab, I'm gonna grab some code here so you don't have to watch me type it out. Um, just right up here, I shall paste. So here we're going to grab that variable, uh, the MCCB ponies um, with view child, and we're setting it to static false because we want to have the ability to use this inside of ng after view init. And so after the view has initted, we're going to say uh, MCBB, MCCB ponies, as a mouthful, and we're going to toggle its open state. And so if we save this and we go ahead and refresh, you'll see that when it loads in the, uh, and it even has a nice animation, the table itself is, uh, is open, which is beautiful. Um, and it is either on the top or the bottom based on how much space on the page it has. So uh, it was one of my, my favorite little features, so I thought I'd show it off real quick. But I hope you've enjoyed um, this short demo showing off our really cool drop downs. Make sure, again, you check out the docs for more details on all of those and, of course, more rich features that we didn't have time to dive into today. Thank you so much for watching this Kendo UI for Angular tutorial. Comment for more things that you'd like to see and like and subscribe for content just like this. Till next time.